Hey everybody, it's Professor Williams, and today we're going to talk about decision trees and how we can use those to find joint probabilities. So grab a sheet of paper or the back of an envelope and jot these numbers down because you're going to need them again. So what we know is Wanda goes for a walk three days out of seven. And if she goes for a walk, there's an 80% percent, percent excuse me, chance she's going to see a squirrel. If she doesn't go for a walk, then she's going to hang out in the backyard, but there's still a 40% chance of her seeing a squirrel. So we're going to construct and use a decision tree to find these joint probabilities. All right, so I'm going to try and create this tree without it becoming a hot mess. But we know that for any event, that when we begin our event, there's this probability of one associated with it. So either something is going to happen or it's not. So in this case, she's either going to go for a walk or she's not. I'm using that W bar to indicate the complement of walk. So walk or no walk. So the question told us that she goes for a walk three days out of seven. And so when I divide three into seven, I get 0.4285. But for the sake of everybody's brain, we're just going to round that to 0.43. And so again, applying the complement rule, the probability of yes plus no has to be 1. So that's going to make that 0.57. So the question told us that if she goes for a walk, the two things are going to happen. She's either going to see a squirrel or she's not going to see a squirrel. And when she walks, I've got this 80% chance or for seeing a squirrel, which again, complement rule, right? Walk squirrel plus no squirrel has to equal one. So 20% chance of no squirrel. So on those days when it's either raining or I'm lazy, she stays home. And if she doesn't go for a walk, then what we know is the problem told us that the probability that she sees a squirrel is 40%. Again, the complement rule, squirrel, no squirrel, has to equal 1, and so I know that this is 60%. So um, where my students tend to fall down is they don't finish their tree. In other words, they don't carry it all the way out. And the way that I'm going to carry the tree out to the end is I'm simply going to follow these branches. So I'm going to say walk. And then I'm going to go up the squirrel branch, which we know looks like the probability of a walk and seeing a squirrel. This branch here is going to be walk and no squirrel. I bet by now you're getting a hang of this, right? Oops. Probability of walk and no squirrel. And down here is our no walk branch. So... We'll follow the branches out, no walk, squirrel, and here is no walk and no squirrel, which makes Wanda a really unhappy girl. So now all I have to do is apply the multiplication rules of probability, and I'm going to say probability of walk, yes, squirrel, yes, is 0.3 times 0.8, which gives me a joint probability of 0 0.344. And now I'm going to say probability of walk is 43% times 20% multiplied together according to the multiplication rules. It's going to give me a probability of 0 0.086. So now I'm down here extending my no walk branch, which is 57% no walk, 40% squirrel. So multiplying those two together, I get 0 0.228. And now last but not least, we have the sad branch, which is no walk and no squirrel. The 0.57 times the 0 0.60 gives me 0 0.342. So one of the things to um, check yourself is in this branch here, the walk, the walk branch, we took this 43%, 
and I simply split it. I said 80% of the 43% and 20% of the 43%. So when I get out here to both of my walk branches, I know that has to equal 43%. Same way here. I took the 57% and I put 40% of the 57 on my squirrel branch. I put the other 60% of the 50% of the 57% on my no squirrel branch and so that I know that my extension of my squirrel no squirrel branch has to equal 0.57 because way back here in the tree I started with one and so when I get to the end of my tree I have to finish with one so this could have had a zillion more branches and you would have still just kept multiplying all of your twigs together um, because all we're doing is we're just splitting up these um, underlying probabilities or percentages. We're just splitting them into ever smaller slices. So I think this is really useful for a lot of these probability questions and I hope that the video helped. Hope to see you on the YouTube channel soon.